Hello all. So this is exactly my data set on which I have to perform my time series analysis and I have to build such a model that can predict with respect to my time. So you will see this exactly is my data set on which I have to do several kind of prediction. So you will see I had different, different features. What exactly is the previous closing price? What is the opening price of a stock? What is the highest price of a stock on a particular day? What is the lowest price? What was the last price? And what is this VWAP, which stands for Volume Weighted Average Price? So this is exactly your dependent feature that you have to predict with respect to this date. So what I have to do over here now, I am going to open my Jupyter notebook, and very first I am just going to import my pandas as pd, and this is exactly that alias, and now I am also going to import my numpy as np. So very first you have to read this data. So this is exactly that part where exactly my file is present. So now I am going to open Jupyter Notebook again and here I have to just call a function which is exactly my read underscore csv and in this you have to just pass this part and you can press tab over here to get your file name. So this is exactly that file name and let's say after reading your data let's say df is exactly my data frame. So you can call a head on your data frame as well to check about a rough idea of your data frame. So this is exactly your dependent feature that we have to predict with respect to all these features. So very first, I'm going to check whether I have any missing values in my data or not. But you will see it's a time series use case. So all the things that are going to happen in your data must be with related to your time series index. So very first, you have to assign your index this date column. So now on my data frame, I'm going to say df dot set index and here I have to just assign my date column and I am also going to update my data frame just passing this in place parameter. Now let's say I am going to plot this VWP variable to check what is the trend of my volume weighted average price. So for this very first you have to just access this variable and now you can simply call plot over there. So now you will see this is exactly a trend how the prices are going to increase and then i have a downfall then again i have a spike over here again so from this visual you can observe yeah i have here some kind of seasonality in my data because you will see your mean and standard deviation is not constant throughout the data so now here you have to do your feature engineering so very first i am going to check what exactly the shape of my data frame you will see its shape is somewhere 5000 somewhere approx to now i'm going to check whether i have any any values in my data frame or not for this i have to just execute it you will see it has most number of any values in this dates then i have any values in this deliver volume then i have this much in this as well so you can simply drop this or you can impute it using mean or median or some different advanced approaches as well so for your sake of simplicity i'm just going to drop all these missing values so for this i'm going to say df dot drop any and in this i have to set my in place parameter as true so now if i am again going to check whether i have any null value or not you will see you don't have any null value so now you will see now right now you have just somewhere 20 300 entries in your data frame so let's say i'm going to copy this df in my data so data is exactly a data frame and this is exactly a copy of your df so i'm going to say df dot copy and now if i'm going to check what are my data types of each and every feature you will see this has this this has this previous close has float and all the features have different different data types assigned over And very first i am going to declare a list in which i am going to consider those features on which i can perform some kind of rolling concept and moving average concept depending upon what features i have so very first if i am going to check uh, what are my total columns in my data frame so you will see these are exactly my all the columns so let's say i am going to consider this high this low and this let's say this volume and this turnover and this state so these are my all the five features that i'm going to consider for my lagging purpose so let's say i'm going to define my list as lag underscore features and in this the very first one is exactly your high 
and let's say the second one is exactly your low and let's say the third one is exactly your volume the fourth one is exactly your i think turnover yeah this is exactly your turnover and the fifth one you will see your fifth one is exactly your trades this one so here you have to just say as trades so this is exactly that list which will contain all my lagging features so let's say i'm going to define my window size so i'm going to say very first window size is assume you can say as three and let's say the second one window size you can assume it as let's say seven or you can assume third window size of let's say 20 or 30 days as well so let's say uh, it is showing me invalid syntax error because i have here assigned this one it's not dot it's a comma because you have to separate your each and every entity so you can again execute it now what i'm going to do i'm just going to iterate on each and every feature and then on that basically i'm going to apply my rolling concept as well as my moving average concept so for this i'm going to say i'm just going to iterate as for feature in this lag underscore features and here i'm going to consider each and every feature and on this i'm going to say i have to roll on the basis of very first window size so i'm going to assign my window size as let's say window one and on that i have to say let's say call me and let's say after performing all this stuff i have to define my let's say new column and let's say the new column is feature uh let's say feature underscore rolling mean or rolling underscore mean underscore three so for this you have to just assign as uh let's say rolling underscore mean underscore three so this is exactly your very first feature you can just copy it and you can again paste over here this time this will be for your window two and this time let's say i'm going to name this feature as our uh, rolling underscore mean underscore seven so you can copy this entire blocks of code let's say you have to perform rather than performing this mean you can perform a standard deviation as well so just execute it and now this time it's time for your standard deviation for this you have to just call this std function this is exactly your std and you have to mention your dot over there and let's say uh, rather than this mean i'm going to say this rolling underscore std underscore three because here i'm going to consider my window size as three so you can again execute this and now if you are going to call ahead on your data frame you will see a new features has been added in your data frame you will see these all are those features that have been added in your data frame and if you want to check what exactly all those columns are so you will see these all are my those column that are highly helpful for you to predict your volume weighted average price with respect to each and every date that's why my idea behind this that's why why i'm going to create all these columns so if i'm going to check what exactly is the shape of my data frame so you will see its shape is somewhere 2 to 9 1 comma 34 so you will see it has some nn values after creating all the new features so let's say i'm going to check how many nn values i have in my data so for this i can just call this simple code and you will see let's say each and every feature had some very less number of nn value so you can simply drop this so i'm going to say just drop it and you can update your data frame as well so just execute it and your data gets updated so what you have to do let's say i'm going to define my new list let's say in underscore features so very first i'm going to check what are my total columns or what are my total total columns in my data frame you will see all those features are so let's say for independent features so these are exactly all my independent features that i'm going to pass to my model for my training purpose so i'm going to just copy this and let's say i'm going to create a list over here and i'm just going to paste over here so this is exactly my all the independent features so now i'm going to create my let's say training data and testing data so let's say i'm going to create a new data frame as training underscore data and in this let's say uh, if you are going to check what is the shape of your data you will see it has somewhere two to nine one rows let's say the first 1800 rows 
I'm going to consider for my training purpose. So I have to say in this way. And let's say for my testing data on which I have to do my prediction. So I'm going to consider it from 1800 index to the last. So just execute it. And if you want to print, you can print it as well. So it doesn't matter if you want to print or not. I'm just going to show to you. You will see it has 1800 rows and this much number of columns. So you can use this data for training your Arima model. Then I can do prediction on my this test underscore data data frame. So that's all about this session. In the upcoming session, I'm going to show you how you can apply Arima on your data. And before that, I'm going to give you some basics behind what is Arima, in what use case you can apply Arima. Then I'm going to check what exactly is the accuracy of my Arima model. So hope you love this session. Thank you. Have a nice day. Keep learning, keep growing, keep practicing.